For the duration of today's conference, all participants' lines are running listen-only mode until the question and answer session. At that time, if you would like to ask a question, press star 1. Today's call is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. It is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Shonda Schrader. Thank you, ma'am, and may begin. Thank you, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. As Holly shared, I am Shonda Schrader, and I am the Principal Investigator for the Rural Health Research Gateway. Today, I'm going to take just a few brief minutes to share with you how state offices of rural health and other community programs can utilize Gateway to promote your work and to develop strong programs and strong grant proposals. So very briefly, the Rural Health Research Gateway, or as we refer to it as just Gateway, is funded by the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy. The primary purpose of Gateway is to share the work of the federally funded rural health research centers with many different audiences, and this includes state offices of rural health and rural community programs. There are currently 10 rural health research centers and policy analysis initiatives that are studying national rural health issues. We recognize that state offices of rural health and other programs can't spend your day searching for new research and trying to identify new policy recommendations and resources. So really, Gateway houses the work of these research centers in one place. And we also notify anyone interested as soon as we have a new policy brief or a new report. We do this outreach through social media posts, through our email alert system. And what we're really trying to do is just to make sure that the research results are shared efficiently and effectively with diverse audiences, including yourself. And then we hope that you'll do this as well to identify these resources and share them with all of your partners and groups and organizations. So more specifically, you can use the Gateway website to learn more about each of the rural health research centers to learn more about each of those research centers' work, their topic areas, their specialties. You can access freely all of their reports, their policy briefs, their fact sheets, and you can sign up for our email alerts to be notified when we have new research. And you can even sign up for the free webinars like today and access our communication toolkit. And we use that and develop that to assist programs to write their own fact sheets or their own one-pagers and policy briefs. Gateway does have a lot of resources. It's a very thorough website, and it has a lot of search functionalities. But really, there are a few specific resources that I think are especially valuable for our state offices and our community programs. And I'm going to highlight a few of those right now. The resources on Gateway can really assist all of you in your grant writing. It can help you find current rural health data points. It can help you access figures and maps that we are happy for you to take, pull, and share with your rural partners with rural providers or policymakers. And you can even use Gateway just to identify which topics are on the forefront for rural communities when you look at what the current research projects are. With all of these functionalities, I'm going to walk you through some screenshots of our website just to get you familiar with all of the ways that you can use our website. One of our most popular pages would be our topic list. On this page, you can search any rural health topic on Gateway to see all of the work that's been done. You can access current policy briefs under these specific topics, and you can see what research is currently being done. I'm going to walk you through an example from that very bottom of the list, the critical access hospitals. If you were to select critical access hospitals from our topic page, we bring you to an area where you can identify that there are currently two ongoing research projects related to critical access hospitals. You see the next hyperlinked line that identifies there are 40 projects that have been completed. And then there are 65 research products that you can access on this specific topic. Products generally are policy briefs, fact sheets, chart books, or reports. You can also see that if we don't have what you're looking for on a given topic, we direct you to other products. Now you see highlighted in red, this is that same topic, but this is where they are housed through the Flex Monitoring Team and through the Rural Health Information Hub. 
we really are dedicated to trying to make this one place that you can go to find all of the current information on your topic of interest. If you're more interested in identifying what current rural health issues are that might be facing your hospitals or your communities or various programs, you can look at the most recent products that have been completed by our research centers. You can also be notified about these new recent projects and products through our research alerts. This little box on the right-hand side of the screen that says subscribe to research alerts will appear on several different landing pages on our website, trying to encourage anyone who wants to be notified to sign up and to receive notification about webinars, reports, and policy briefs. We do not send research alerts regularly or weekly or monthly. Instead, we only send when we have a new product. So if you sign up today and you are not notified for a month or so about a new product, don't be surprised. We can go a couple of weeks without any research alerts at all, and then we can have a period of time where we have a lot of new releases and we want to make sure you receive all of them, and you may receive two or even three within a two-week period. Research products that we do send out through our alerts and that we house on our website are written for all audiences, and they really are intended to highlight the key findings right up front. And then they also provide figures and charts that you can cut, paste, and utilize when you're writing one-pagers. And they even provide maps. You can pull these and use them for grant applications, when writing policy reports of your own, or if you're just looking for one-pagers to share with your programs and providers. In fact, one comment that we were hearing from different partners in our state offices and other partners with organizations like the National Rural Health Association was that it's great that some of our research centers explore similar topics from different perspectives, but it can be really difficult to find a short summary of that work. As an example, we might have several research centers studying the impact of opioid use in our rural communities. So then we've developed a one-page recap that identifies all of the different research being done by our research centers. And we link to those larger briefs within these one-pagers so that you can find all of the information you might need. I'm going to walk you through an example of what these recaps look like just so you can become a little bit more familiar. The recap on rural hospital closures summarizes the work of seven different policy briefs that were written by our research centers on that shared topic. So throughout the document, we link to and reference the policy brief where the information was pulled from. So if you should want more information on that specific figure or on that specific data point, you can click directly on the original policy brief and you will be rerouted to the full document. Webinars hosted by Gateway are another great opportunity for those who work in our state offices and our community programs, but they are really an excellent opportunity also for the communities and the programs and providers that you all represent and work with. And we encourage you to share these opportunities with others, even if it might not be relevant to you specifically. Our webinars are free, they are recorded, and they are archived. We typically announce them through social media and on our research alerts. They bring in a researcher or two from our research centers to discuss one of their current research products. So this really is a great opportunity for you to get to visit with those researchers one-on-one -on -one and ask questions that you might have. They likely will highlight findings from a policy brief that's already been released and talk a little bit more in depth about the research studies itself. And then they answer questions that you all might have and even more valuable in my opinion is that then they ask for conversation around what all of you think might be the next step to address the given topic. So it allows conversation and really the ability to see the impact of the research in the rural community. And then finally, a resource that may be valuable for those of you who are tasked with writing up summaries or one-pagers or other resources specific to your state or your community program would be our dissemination toolkit. This is a document that we highlight which audiences each product is best for, and then we help identify for you the way to write these various resources. As an example, this is a page taken from our dissemination toolkit. We provide just one page of tips and guidelines for how to develop a strong product 
And in this example, that would be a policy brief. So here you'll see the one page that describes what a policy brief is, when you should write one, what audience it's best intended for, and then we provide tips exactly on how to make an effective policy brief, including even design elements. Then within that toolkit, the very next page is a sample. The toolkit can be accessed directly from our homepage, as can all of those other resources I spoke of earlier, our products, our alerts, and information about our research centers, and access to those one-page recaps. The website is ruralhealthresearch.org, and that is also on the left-hand side of the screen today for you to access. For 30 years, the Rural Health Research Centers have been conducting policy-relevant research on healthcare in rural areas, and the work that they do really does provide a voice for rural communities in the policy process. Gateway just has the pleasure of being that one place for you to go to to access all of that great work. And then we serve as a resource to all of you in our state offices and our community programs to really connect you to that research, identify the partners that you might need to access for more information, and to give you various methods and modes of disseminating the work. I encourage all of you to visit the website, ruralhealthresearch.org, find resources that are valuable to your organization, share them shamelessly, contact me anytime for questions or recommendations, and I truly thank you for joining me today and hope that you have other partners that you can share the recording of this webinar with so they can see how to use Gateway for their community programs and state offices.